Good Monday morning, ladies. Good Monday morning. Today I am going to make sure that I am actually in my group. Unlike last week where I was not live in the group and that was so frustrating. Oh, sorry ladies. I forgot my light. We're going to take a we're going to take a tiny pause and I'm going to grab my light so you guys can see. Uh okay. All right, give me one second. I thought I was a little more prepared than that, but apparently not, so. <laughs> oh, you guys love me anyway, right? Okay, there we go. We're gonna get this going, ladies. Today is Monday, and I am so excited to kind of unpack the idea of God's perfect timing and what's holding us back from that. Um, so let's make sure I'm live in the group. If you are with me, give me a hashtag live, hashtag replay. Good morning, Jennifer. Thank you for letting me know you are with me this morning. I am so excited to talk with you guys about, I'm going to share the real and raw always, right? Like I, I have held myself back from extraordinary opportunities. And, you know, the thing is, is that sometimes we're waiting on God's timing. But I really think that often we're waiting on the fact that we are the issue. We are the issue. All right, so hold on. Let me get going on Instagram. And I'm going to get going on Instagram here too. Whoops. Ha ha ha. Flip that around, guys. There we go. All right, so now we're on Instagram Live and I really wanted to make sure that I, oops, I just bumped it, sorry. <laughs> yeah, watch the replay, Lauren. You know I'm gonna be unpacking this and it's gonna be, it's gonna be 20 minutes, I'm gonna tell you. Like I always try to keep it low, but I have a ton of verses I wanna unpack with you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> so happy Monday morning, you guys. I have been thinking on God's perfect timing. I have been thinking about my journey in the online space. Um, and this all kind of came out, I, it had been on my mind, but here's the funny part. When God wants me to talk about something, I typically will get more than one or two people will be talking to me about that same thing. Good morning, Kimberly, good morning. Um, and so I really, ooh, I can't wave for whatever reason, Instagram. Thanks, Instagram. We love you anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, Facebook and Instagram last week, Facebook put me on my own profile. We just go, we gonna love social media, ladies. We're just gonna have a positive attitude. <laughs> So good morning, good Monday morning. My name is Leah Mason Virgin. I am your Christian business coach, life coach, and author at BurstingWithBlessings.com. And today is Monday, and we are going to be unpacking the idea of um, blocking our own gifts, blocking our own extraordinary opportunities, um, the idea of waiting on the Lord, um, God's perfect timing, those that is that's where we're really gonna go right now we're really going to because it's been on my heart and mind right i see things in the online space that make me feel like frustrated with the little tiny drippets of like you know inspirational posts that have no strategy behind them where people are like, God's timing is perfect. Just wait on it. Blah, 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 blah. Like all these little, tiny little trinkets, basically. It's like a trinket of information that is supposed to encourage, but really I feel like it discourages. I really do. Like I see these things like, um, you know, an, an extraordinary opportunity is coming your way. Give me an amen by the end of this month. And of course, you know, it's an engagement post. I get the strategy behind it, right? So all of a sudden you have, um, you know, 50 people saying, ah, amen, amen, I'm going to have 
something awesome happen by the end of this month. Amen, amen. Right? It's God's timing. <laughs> but here's the thing that I want for you guys. You guys know that my heart is for you guys to know scripture almost better than your pastor. Let me say that again. I want you to have a deep dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ in such a way that as you are sitting there on Sunday morning and your pastor is naming a scripture to you and reading it to you and talking about it, that you know it so well that if something isn't aligning with what he's saying, you are questioning with the Holy Spirit. That's where I want you. That's where I want me. I want us knowing scripture, the totality of scripture. I want you guys not falling for the little Instagram post that says, you know, if you have a business that God called you to, you're going to magically get clients. Okay. It doesn't say that. Normally it says, God called you to it. God will provide. <laughs> and I'm like... Well, yes, however, how does he want you to co-create it with him, okay? That always gives this impression that somehow God is going to rain down clients on you. Somehow God's going to, you know, he called you to a house and you don't have the money for it. And you're like, but, that, but God said that's my house. Like, he, he needs to just give it to me. That's not the totality of scripture, ladies. Let me just tell you, like the more I dig into scripture, and you guys have heard me talk about this before, like God wants you to become the miracle. He wants you to grow in such a way that you can co-create that blessing with him. I trust me, y'all know, y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> I want the lotto ticket. I want the magically rain down clients. I want the easy button, the fast pass lane. Like, I want that, right? Yes, of course. Kimberly said, unless he has told you to wait. Yes, which there are times where he is like, here's the dream. You need to wait. And here's why, because it goes right back to what I'm going to talk about today, because you are not ready. I am not ready. Mentally, emotionally, mindset wise, experientially, you have not experienced enough. You have not had an open mind enough. You have not grown enough to receive. And I say this lovingly, ladies, because you know, you know, you know, you know. I'm right there with you. You know that this that I am doing something right now that I absolutely, I am working with this amazing client and I am doing some amazing things. And I thought about the fact that, like, why couldn't I have had this last year? You know, like, why couldn't I have co-created this a while ago? But I realize the amount of things that I have learned and done in the last six months and where my mindset is right now. My mindset, my growth, it is only now that I am ready to embrace this thing. That I'm able to do this thing. That's right. Kimberly said you weren't ready then. I know. Like I was not. I can't hit the wave button. I was not ready at that time. I didn't know enough. I had chosen to plug into a lot of, of learning over the last couple of six months. And the thought in my mind, I was even talking to my mentor, Ryan Dowdy. So this is how this kind of all came about that I really decided like I wanted to unpack this with you guys. And she was, she even said something like, I don't know that I would have been ready for X had it been given to me a year ago. And I was like, absolutely. Right? Like God, God waits until our mind is capable 
of doing the thing, of understanding the thing, of wrapping our minds around it, co-creating it with him, embracing it, not fearing it. Here's the thing, I get on discovery calls with amazing women all the time, and do you know what I see that makes me like wanna cry? I get on these calls and these women are afraid. They don't believe enough in themselves to do what God is calling them to do. Hey, good morning, Kita. Good morning, Laura. <laughs> Kimberly says, sometimes I'm not sure I'm ready when he says I am. But the one thing about you, girl, is that you step out in faith almost every single time he has called you. You just do it. You do it scared. And that's a hard place to do when you're scared, right? To do when you think you're not ready. And I'm on these discovery calls with these amazing women. And you know why some of them don't buy into my programs? It has nothing to do with me, nothing. And just so you know, people who don't buy into your programs, the vast majority of the time has nothing to do with you. It's that they don't believe they can get the outcome. They don't believe enough in themselves to do the thing. To trust that you can encourage them and guide them enough to do the thing. That is the key. And think about it, ladies. Why? Why were the Israelites in the desert for so long? Because they were obstinate to believe wholeheartedly in God. God was ready to give them the promised land. He was ready. They weren't ready. God's perfect timing? Y'all, some of you are blocking it. Because you don't want to sit down and do the journaling work, do the mindset work, plug into the word of God, and do it scared. And do it with a faith that is so trusting in God that if you fall on your face, you'll be okay. And I'm preaching to myself, ladies. You are not the only one. Right? Right? Hey, think about how many times has God said the former things shall not be remembered. Why couldn't they enter into the promised land? Because they were remembering the former things. The former idols. The former abuse. Living in their trauma. Not unpacking it with God and getting healing. Who else is like that? Right? How many times I'm trying to do a new thing. It is springing up now. Will you not be aware of it? Put your hand to the plow. Do not look back because if you do, you're not fit for the kingdom. Harsh. That's Jesus said that in Luke. And I cling to that all the time. And I think God is saying, put your hand to the plow. Do it scared. Do it in the, I'm not worthy, but you called me. And so my active worship is going to be, I'm doing it. He had a plan. The original plan was for him and us to be in a deep, dynamic relationship. And sin broke that. And what did he do? He decided, I'm going I'm to bring my dwelling in through the Israelites. And that still wasn't close enough. He wasn't close enough to transform us. And so what did he do? He said, now here's my son to die for you, to bleed for you, to take your sins and then to dwell within you. I don't deserve that. But how dare I say, Lord, I don't deserve. So I'm not going to do the thing you've called me to do. Jesus going, I'm dwelling within you. The Holy Spirit is within you. The past is no more. My timing is now, he said. 
My timing is now, I said, my son, it is now. He said, I will put my spirit into your daughters and they will prophesy. And they will create with me. The timing is now. But we are missing it and we are missing the extraordinary opportunities because we are not prepared. Because we do not have a faith and a trust in his word in such a way that we are willing to embarrass ourselves, fall on our faces, have to pivot. And I'm speaking to myself, ladies. Because how many times over three years have I been doing and building and trying and learning and growing? And yes, I've had embarrassing moments where I'm like, man, I shouldn't have said that. Man, I shouldn't have done that. But I refuse to allow embarrassment and the fact that, no, there's never a day that I wake up and I'm like, oh, I got this. Like, I got this. Never a day. But isn't that exactly what Paul was talking about when he said, I have this thorn in my side so that I don't become a pompous brat? Essentially. I'm, that's, I'm paraphrasing there, ladies. <laughs> right? Like, I have this thing where I, I, I have to battle anxiety away and I have to battle depression away every day. Why? Because I believe that it keeps me deeply yoked into his word. I believe that it keeps me deeply dependent on him. Because I have to say every day, I love you more, Lord, than my comfort and my security. I love you enough to go share embarrassing things with these amazing women. Why? Because they deserve to not feel alone. They deserve to be empowered. I want to see them grow a kingdom agenda. So I'm going to say and do whatever you tell me to say and do. And the outcome is yours. And yeah, I'm going to screw it up. But, you know, praise Jesus. All things he can redeem. All things he can transform. Think about that, ladies. Think about that. He said in Psalm 45, and really I've been thinking about this psalm, and I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And ladies, I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta, like, you gotta pray and talk to the Holy Spirit. Psalm 45, and this from the New American Standard Bible. It is not verbatim, so go read it in your own translation. And I wrote out, listen, give. You have to listen to him. You have to know his word. Then you have to give attention to it. Gnaw on it, think on it, pray on it with the Holy Spirit. Incline your ear to what he is saying, what he's telling you. It says, forget your people and your father's house, then the king will desire your beauty because he is your Lord, bow down to him. The people will seek your favor. That's verse 12. 13, the king's daughter is all glorious within. All glorious within. And how I could even say that about myself Ladies, there is no way that I would ever dare to say that about myself. But Jesus, that's the only reason I can speak that out as an affirmation. I am glorious within because he has healed and transformed me. Because that that is the truth, that without him, there's no glory within me. I'm going to be running my makeup all over. There's no glory within me. I can't shine any light. The only light I can shine is his light. I can only co-create something good with him. I could only heal with him. So 
Psalm 18, God trains my hand, mouth, and mind to deliver what he wants. I am girded with strength for every day and circumstance. The Lord makes the enemy to flee away from me. And if you guys are not praying every day that the enemy would flee in seven different directions away from you and that Jesus would rebuke the devourer away from your harvest of blessings, I'm going to tell you right now, you are hamstringing yourself. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. <laughs> I am the head of my company with God. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock and exalted be the God of my salvation because I will give him all glory every day, all day, anytime I do something. Because I know I cannot do it but God. But Jesus. I wrote that out as an affirmation, and I encourage you to go, Psalm 18, Psalm 45, unpack this. Because you are worthy once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are in his perfect timing if you are willing to listen and obey. Stop procrastinating on the thing, ladies. What is God calling you to do today? What is it? It might be a mundane task that you don't want to do. I can't tell you how many times he has called me to a mundane task. And one thing I love about Terry Savelle Foy, she said in the beginning of her transformation journey, God simply said, clean out your fridge, fold the laundry. You start small and you build. And then the doors open. He opens the doors when you are ready, when your mindset is ready. But do you want to miss out on your inheritance in this life and the life to come because you haven't prepared, because you haven't built up your mindset, because you haven't journaled about your value and your worth and your calling? Because here's the thing, ladies, no one on this planet gives you permission. We are a permission society. And granted, that's how I am going to raise my children. They do need permission before they eat some ice cream or they'll eat the whole tub. Okay? But you are now an adult. You are now more spiritually mature than you were as a child. Stop seeking permission from anyone else but God. Stop asking others what they think. Because that's all somebody's post the other day. It was like, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that unless you have X, Y, Z. And I was like, you don't get to say. I was talking to a client and she was like, oh, do you think my, my ebook is worthy enough to be on Amazon? And I was like, girl, nobody, nobody can tell you not to put your book on Amazon. Put your book on Amazon. If nobody buys it, who cares? You have a book on Amazon. I have nine books on Amazon. Did anybody tell me I could do that? Nope. But God told me to do it. And so I said, yes and amen. And I marched my little butt on YouTube and figured out how to do it. I don't need to go to a publishing company. I don't need anyone's permission to go live. I don't need anyone's permission to tell me how to build my Christian business. And neither do you. Now you want it to prosper, best be asking Jesus about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not viral. I don't have millions of people watching. I don't even have hundreds of people watching my videos. I don't care. I don't care if zero people watch. God said, talk about this. Write about me. Do this thing. And I said, okay. I'll finally listen to you. It only took three decades. <laughs> Long time to Moses up in here. But think about Moses. 
Like that man. Of course he should have been the last person God picked. So should I have been. <laughs> he was a murderer. He lacked confidence. He questioned God nonstop. But the more he spent time with God, the stronger of a leader he became till his face shone and he had to put a veil over his face because the people he was talking to didn't want to see it. Talk about a mindset on them. They were like, oh, we don't want to hear from God. We only want to hear from you. Wow, what a broken mindset to be missing out on hearing it directly from God. I, that always blows me away every time I read that passage. They were so broken. They were so enslaved. They were so shackled. That they were like, oh, we'll hear it from you, Moses. I don't want to hear it from Moses. I mean, I will in the Bible. Y'all know what I mean. I don't want to hear it from just my pastor. I want to know scripture better than my pastor. I want to have a deep dynamic relationship with God in such a way that I'm more obedient every day. I'm not there yet. You guys think that I'm there yet. Y'all know. Go watch some of my other lives. I tell you even more stuff. <laughs> All right. So, obedient unto the Lord. That's right. It's not for the praise of people. Because he's growing us. He's growing our mindset. And he has extraordinary opportunities that he wants to give you guys. If you think what you have right now is all God wants to give you, you are mistaken. And that I can say with absolute positive truth. What you have right now is not all he has for you. What I have right now not all there's so much more and there are things I'm not ready for that I really wish I was I guess I'm gonna have to keep on working on me huh all right ladies let's go to the Lord dear Jesus thank you for this day thank you for your love and mercy thank you that you kept breaking in to this broken sinful world and kept building and building a way for us to come into a deep dynamic relationship with you. To be forgiven and free. To be called. To be made worthy. To be made beautiful on the inside. In such a way that we can build three cities like you did with Shira. That we can become judges like Deborah, we can become anything and everything that you have called us to, Lord. Jesus, forgive us our sins, those things that we know and those things that we don't know. Forgive us, Lord. Things done and left undone and so uphold us by your Spirit. Help us, Lord, to see where we need to be bolder, more courageous in you, to be more obedient, to care less what others think, to stop seeking permission from others, and to only seek your face, to seek your face continually with praises continually in our mouth. to go and tell about all your wonderful deeds, for this is the day that you have made. And you are calling us by name. Wow. Who am I that you should be mindful of me? But you are. Therefore, it is my active worship to be obedient to the calling that you have granted to us. 
Help us, Lord, to put our hand to the plow and not to look back, not to care about what our family says, our father's house, our people, no matter what it is. Help us, Lord, to go forth and to co-create it. Surround us with hedges of protection. Rebuke the adversary far from us. Cause the enemy to flee in seven different directions away from us. And cause what the enemy and the locust has eaten and destroyed to be returned to us sevenfold this year. Help us to sow seeds, to build with you. And please grant us a hundredfold harvest above the seeds we have sown this year. Send out your angel armies in accordance with your will and your way. We pray for revival in this world. We we pray for revival in the Christian church, for more women and men to dig deep into scripture, to imprint it upon their hearts and minds, and to obey it, to stand firm against evil, injustice. We are crying out, Lord, that we be a part of your kingdom agenda. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for always giving us our daily bread, for providing for us, for surrounding us with favor, for uplifting us with your righteous right hand, for holding us by our hand, for picking us up when we fall. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all thanks and praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, ladies, it has been my absolute honor and privilege <clears throat> to serve you today. And I look forward to um, Thursday. We're going to be unpacking how to create an opt-in that is a um, something that you can use as a sales tool. And so drop your um, any freebie that you want me to give feedback on. And I will see you guys on Thursday live and in the daily devotionals each morning and please feel free to reach out to me i'm happy to pray with you and i'll go fix my makeup ladies <laughs> and i love you guys and i'll see you guys tomorrow